All right, Real House Productions take one. Eight to nine PSI Productions take one. <laughs> Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman, and this is the Maurice Cole Black Dingo, part of the Dingo family, Dirty Dingo, Red Dingo, and right here we have the Black Dingo. I'll tell you, uh, initially, when we heard about this board coming out and had an overall general description of it, we thought it was going to be a step-up version of the Dirty Dingo. Dirty Dingo is uh, Maurice's all-around squash tail short hybrid, and we thought uh, that board's becoming so popular that we thought this board was going to be the step-up version to it, just based on the overall description. Uh, once we got the board in hand, uh, it definitely started looking a little bit different than what that board uh, is, what the Dirty Dingo is, and, and just basically being its own its own standalone board. Uh, tell you a little bit about this board. You can look at the board. Uh, it's available in mid sixes up to mid seven foot lengths. And overall, it's got a hybrid nose, uh, you know, mid size widths, and then goes into a round uh, pintail. But what differs this board from, you know, a quote unquote step up board to, uh, to other models or a step up board in general is that once it gets to the width, step up boards normally max out about here, and then they start coming in into a more tapered round pintail. This board gets to its max width, and then it keeps a lot of that width further into the board. And in the, in the written review of this board, we talk about this board carrying its width further back, and then also actually carrying it back into the, what we call the third quarter. If so you got like the first quarter up here, second quarter, third quarter right here, this is where you see a lot of the step up boards losing their width, actually coming in pretty dramatically right here where this board, it gets to that width and then it maintains a lot of its width from here all the way through to about here and then starts tapering off into you know, a full figured round pintail. So what does that do? It makes the board pretty parallel in here, but it also gives you more width in that third quarter of the board. And so typically when you, when you take a, a a longer step up length board out, it feels great like once you get it in good waves, but if you get it in average waves, it's, uh, it just basically has no push, it has no lift underneath your feet, and it feels really stiff in the turns. The lift or the lack of lift comes from the tail being too narrow and not giving you enough like up force underneath your feet. The stiffness just comes from the board being too straight in this area right here. So if you, if you max out here, and then go straight back to the pintail, you're gonna have a really straight line back here, which is great for, for hauling ass and, and going straight and having like really powerful waves. But if you wanna do any turns and average waves, the, the rail line just ends up being too straight. So by having this width go further back and then into the, into the round pin, it just gives you better medium to bottom end range, as well as the length of the board, uh, the foil of the board and the overall design of the board gives you the upper end range that you're looking for. So all around, a really well-rounded board uh, in those longer lengths, like six, six and a half to seven and a half in length. And looking at other boards in this range, um, in that size range, you're really looking at like either narrow, small area tailed step ups, or you're looking at super chunky, high volume, big guy hybrids. But you don't really ever have a board that looks like this, that's got the foil, you know, that has tapered rails in this range, uh, that's a modern uh, high performance hybrid style board. So it's actually, it ends up being a really unique blend of a lot of Maurice's boards into one that creates its own, its own style of board in general. Because when you look at it, it ends up being almost symmetrical end to end, like with the nose and the tail. And, and then that center section almost looks like a, uh, like a glider style board, like a symmetrical double ender glider style board, but then shrunk it down into a high performance hybrid. So really unique outline and, and blend of the characteristics in the board. Bottom shape on this board, again, to give it a lot of range, uh, it starts out with a, with a mild V in the front of the board where a lot of Maurice's boards will start out straight concave in the front. So it starts out with a V, which he took from his proto design, his bigger wave proto step up board into a shallow concave and then into a deeper concave through the tail uh, with a five fin setup. So talking about surfing this board, uh, just got back from Puerto Rico. We, we did a stinger mission on a five day swell. 
down there and uh, got to surf this board uh, coming down off the biggest part of the swell. And it was, uh, it was great because we had a, a, a bunch of good sessions on this board in overhead surf, chest to head high surf, and all the way down to uh, like thigh, like pretty weak, fast sectiony, uh, like thigh to even like knee to thigh high, uh, backside, you know, got to get down the line fast surf. And typically a board like this, with you know, with calling it around pin, that's like the last board that you're gonna expect to do well. But it actually gets gets up and goes super fast, even in those crumbly backside conditions. A lot of that being from having this width in the third quarter, and from still having a lot of area in the tail, and then also from having this straight rail line right here to drive off of. The board's super drivey down the line, gives you a lot of projection out of the turns and uh, overachieves in that super small surf for what you would think for a board like this. Uh, when you get it onto an open face uh, or you get it into the bigger surf, like on that same day, we were still getting uh, sneaker sets coming through that were like chest to a little bit overhead. And when those sets came into that same break, the wave had a lot more punch. Again, backside, uh, but a lot, you know, a lot more punch and a lot more throw on the wave. And uh, this thing stepped right up and got into those waves early, set a really good line and had a lot of good speed and really started to light up in those conditions. Uh, other sessions that we surfed it on were, you know, waist to head plus, uh, both backside and front side on a, on a slopier wave, still a pitch, but not as top to bottom. And when you get this thing on like a walled out rippable wave, that's where it really like opens up the, its legs and really starts to go. And uh, just had some incredible rides on it um, in, you know, in those conditions. Cause that's where you're not running into the length of the board not fitting into the wave. Even on that super small stuff, the length did a great job of fitting because it does taper in and taper in on both ends with some nice roll on the rocker. Uh, but when you get it on, you know, any of those waves that are like stomach high and above with a rippable wall, I mean, the board just absolutely lights up and, and really gets into its own and, uh, and finds its sweet spot and just creates some really good rides backside and frontside. You know, basically surfing waves as perfect, perfectly as we can surf them in our ability. It was a really good board to ride. The, when you look at the board um, overall, just a really good longer hybrid without the, the, the chunky foam that you're normally gonna find in those boards. Like we said before, a lot of boards in this length range are going to be over foamed for an experienced surfer. So this board is just a great board if you're looking for a single board quiver to do a lot of different things with on a trip or you just want to keep your quiver tight, you just want to have one board, uh, it's going to do really well for that because it'll work in junk surf, it'll work in, in really good surf as well. I mean, even at, at overhead surf or head high plus, like it was nowhere near hitting the top of its envelope. Uh, so it has obviously the, the range that you're going to find in a step up, but it has all the bottom end uh, because of that extension of the width and carrying that width into the third quarter of the board where a step up wouldn't. One thing we should definitely point out in this board is the, is the paddle power. When you have a board this length and width, uh, and you know, just it's gonna give you more paddle than on a lot of the shorter boards. And a lot of people, whether they, you know, they just don't want the, the stress of paddling a shorter board or some breaks, I mean, you're, you're just in open water, you're moving around a lot, you're having to cover a lot more ground, or if you're in a place where the waves if you're fortunate enough to be in a place where the waves are super long and then the paddle back is super long where you can't walk back on the beach. Some, a board like this, having that extra length without the associated extra bulk of the foam is a good choice because the thing just basically glides through the water, uh, you know, whether you're paddling, gliding into a wave or, or gliding down the line. We actually gave it the nickname, the, the butter glide because of, uh, how easy it's always gliding through the water and like how it cut, cuts through the water super easy like, like a knife through butter. So that, that longer length but with the foil in it makes the board go through the water really easily uh, paddling. It makes it a great open water paddler or beating current or again like we said, if you're fortunate enough and you're paddling all the way back to the top of a really long wave, this board is going to get you there uh, a lot easier and a lot faster. Just to give you, this is the board that I surfed and just to give you uh, dimensions on this one. It's 6'8 long, uh, 21 and a quarter wide and 2.88 thick. Um, and that 2.88 is really, you know, just in, in this section to this section of the board 
and really just on the stringer out to about here. And then it starts tapering off and the rails are, are pretty foiled out. Not as foiled out as extreme as a, as a uh, Proto, which is the most extreme rail taper that Maurice does, but definitely when you have the board under your arm, it's definitely not 2.88 thick like in your hand, like down here, uh, it definitely foils out. So it, it makes the board have the length and the paddle associated with that length and the shape, but it doesn't feel chunky and thick and over foamed in turns. Like you're able to carry it through turns going really fast and really good transition uh, through the turns. So, you know, all in all, it just, it's a very unique style of board, uh, you know, in a market where kind of a lot of the boards, like you, you've got your grovelers and then you've got your in-betweener hybrids and then you've got your step ups and then you've got your fun boards and then you've got your long boards. There hasn't really been a lot of effort put into this style of board in a long time. And it, and it makes a lot of sense because something like this, you can take it uh, on a trip and, and literally surf it in anything, just a good utility surfboard that surfs at a high level in a lot of different conditions. So it's the Maurice Cole Black Dingo. And again, this board's a 6'8", 21 and a quarter, 2.88, but available in all sizes, 6'6", six, six, up to 7'6". If you have any other questions about the Black Dingo, you can give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000, or you can check it out online on our website, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.